Okay, hello everyone. How's it going? We're going to have a little bit of a different uh, take on things today. I'm going to try and do a bit of a recording uh, preview and then I'll pop this up as a video for you guys to have a bit of a look at. You can tell me if this works, uh, give me any feedback, or if you have any questions related to biology or to this format, you can put them in the comments below. Uh, I'll have to figure out how to set that up, but hopefully it should be okay. All right, the topic of our stream today, or of this video today, is to understand the requirements for uh, the internal that you guys will be working on over the holidays. Hopefully I'm gonna try and make it as clear as possible for you as we go on through. Fortunately, Miss McNair has made some amazing resources already, which I'll be referring to throughout this. All right, let's get started. What should your report look like? Well, there's some sections you will need to include. The first and foremost is your aims and hypotheses. Then you'll need to have some methods. You've already written these, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, some results. Uh, discussion and evaluation section, a conclusion, some references, and possibly an appendix as well. Uh, this isn't the absolute titles you have to have. Some of you might want to include a section like an introduction, for example, or you might want to give some of your sections a slightly different name. That's absolutely fine, as long as you're following that logical layout that we'd expect in a scientific report. If you're doing that, fantastic, awesome. That's all we can really ask for. The additional thing to note uh, is that you will be handing in your log book that you've been completing throughout this. If that's not looking 100% up to date and you've got your results in, you, you're ready to get on with the next step, maybe that's something to have a little bit of a look at. That log book tells us that this work is your own. Remember, your report might look uh, or be on a similar topic to somebody else, but it can't look identical because we're going to know you did it by yourself and we're going to know that because it's in your logbook. Okay. First section, first bit we need to talk about your aim and your hypothesis. So your aim and hypothesis hopefully is pretty well ironed out at this point. We would have uh, checked over it in our classes. Uh, so that should be pretty much okay. Um, it doesn't matter if your hypothesis uh, was incorrect now that you've started gathering your data. If you've seen something different, in fact, that's really exciting and something you can write about. Um, as long as you've written your evaluation well, it does not matter. Okay. Next thing, your methods. Now, we checked over this uh, before we let you rush off and plant your plants, but you might have changed some aspects. We had some students whose uh, plants got a little bit drowned by the amount of water that they were adding into them. We had some people who've needed to make subtle adjustments. Some people didn't follow their method entirely accurately. If that's you, you need to include those details in the uh, section you're calling your methods. You might do that by saying, I initially intended to do this, but instead this happened. The explanations as to why you might want to save for your discussion, uh, but if you want to explain some of the observations you made, uh, maybe those need to go in your results. As long as you've included that information though, that's absolutely fine. Um, your logbook will back up the, uh, the things that you did in your methods or the things that you didn't do, um, so that's absolutely okay. If you did need to make tweaks, um, that's absolutely fine, but those will be recorded in your logbook, so that's all good. All right, first things first when it comes to your results, you will have some raw data. Um, your raw data is not what you put in your normal uh, results section. Our results section is saved for our special processed data. You will want to include your raw data in the submission that you give Miss McNair and I. That can be in a section at the bottom of your report called the appendices. Uh, it could also be just included in your logbook. Whichever way you want to do it, that's up to you. As long as it's there and we can see the raw data that you collected over the course of your experiment, we're doing just fine. Okay. Um, for a scientific report, we tend not to include our raw, raw data in the final report that we write. 
Instead, we include our process data. Mm. Love a good bit of process data. Your process data could be in the form of a summary table, could be in the form of some graphs. The question of how you display this that's up to you. We can give you a little bit of guidance, but we can't tell you exactly what to include. Fortunately, there is some information we can pass on to you. Um, Ms. McNair has already put up an entire PowerPoint uh, on the uh, particular graphs you should be using. This is what we used when we were uh, doing the stream the other day. Um, I will make sure that those slides are available for you. Your choice of graph is dictated by the nature of the variables that you chose, that experiment that you did. Uh, a good uh, type of chart to use is a bar graph, but we only use our bar graphs when one of our variables was categorical, was discrete. Something like, what type of soil did you use? Um, what is your favorite fruit? Would be an example of a categorical variable. If you're comparing that against a continuous variable like plant height or student height or whatever it may be, that would be a perfect graph to use. An alternative graph to use if your variable that you were controlling was continuous, an example of this might be the volume of water that you've given the plant, um, you might instead use a line graph or a scatter plot as uh, those of you doing statistics might have called them. Um, those are fantastic because you can draw a trend. You can draw a line. You don't have to, uh, for level three biology, include an equation um, in your graph. You can if you want to. And if you're feeling nerdy, love to see them. Um, all good if you don't though. Make sure when you submit your final graph and those those pieces of information that you're going to be writing about in your discussion, that they are appropriately labeled and that they're using correct units. That's a really big one. Okay. In terms of your discussion and your evaluation, uh, you will be explaining the trends that you see in that process data. That's why we've got to process it first. Uh, it's much more difficult to uh, explain a trend when you're just looking at a table of raw data. If you've processed it and presented it in a way that's accessible, then it's much easier for you to talk about. So, important things for you to cover within this section are a discussion on the biological ideas underpinning what you observed. If you've seen a difference between different conditions, we want you to link that to something biological. What could be driving that? The place that you will find this will be uh, in some research that you've done. You may find amazing sources which explain the biology behind why uh, one condition that you had versus another uh, show, showed substantially more growth. Um, that would be an amazing thing for you to refer to and to refer back to. Um, in this, you should also do a little bit of a reflection on your experiment. Uh, did you successfully control all the conditions in your methods? Were there some things you could have done better? Uh, were your methods reliable or easily replicable? Did you follow every step? Those sorts of questions would be uh, really important to answer in this section. Um, Ms. McNair has included an amazing PowerPoint on uh, the biological ideas in particular. There's also a number of other ones on the discussion there, which you can refer to, as well as an entire section, uh, or an entire post, I should say, on Google Classroom dedicated to sources you could use to support this discussion, this evaluation of, of your experiment. So those would be great places for you to start if you're keen on starting your report now, which I'm sure a lot of you are. All right, the last section for the body of your report is your conclusion. That's your final summary. There is a format for this. Uh, normally you state the outcome of your investigation, what you saw, um, you discuss the relationship that you've observed between the dependent and independent variable and the overall trend 
um, or lack of trend, depending on what you've observed, and you refer back to that hypothesis that you made at the start. It does not matter if your hypothesis was incorrect. As long as you were making an informed biological decision, or now you're, you're showing exactly the biology that's going on, perfect. What you should not do is restate your results uh, or discuss your results in a great amount of detail. That is all included in your discussion. Um, you're keeping it short, you're keeping it sweet, and that's excellent. That's what we like to see. So, the next section is the part where you put all of your sources so that a person reading your report, including us if we're marking it, can see exactly where you've gotten your ideas from. These sources shouldn't be something you do after you've written your report, they should be the first thing you do as you're going to look for why you've observed what you've observed. Uh, there are a variety of places you can go. You can look at magazines, you can look at websites, you can look to, at pieces of research, you can look at expert comments, you can look at textbooks, you can talk about general scientific ideas, things that are well cited. Um, you can also include other students' work. If another student has done an experiment that's similar to yours, um, and it's shown to be reliable, you can refer to what they've done. We've got a particular way we'd like you to do that, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Now, these can be written as links. They don't have to follow one of the specific referencing formats. If you're in my class, I've talked to you a little bit about APA and Chicago and those ways that scientific articles can be referenced. You can learn to do one of those if you want to. You don't have to, though, not at this level. As long as you've made it accessible to us to know where you've gotten your ideas from, that's perfect. Okay, um, the appendix and sharing your results. So an appendix is an additional section. Sometimes it's known as a supplementary section. Um, and this is the space where if you're thinking about including your raw data, and you don't want to just put it in your logbook, this is the space to put it. You just make a title saying this is my appendix number one, and you place your results under there. Uh, you can sometimes put a little comment to say, these were my raw data. Uh, if you're planning on using another student's results to support your conclusion, you can place their processed data here. If you're planning on doing this, and that's absolutely okay if you do, uh, you must uh, include that processed data in an appendices section. Um, and include that student's name when you're discussing uh, the data that they've produced. So for example, uh, the results that we found were supported by Tammy Smith, who conducted an experiment very similar to ours, where she did blah, 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 blah. If you said something like that, and then you said Tammy showed this, and it looked really similar to ours, and that backs up our results, fantastic. That would be excellent work. All right. Uh, before we finish up for today, um, I just have one more thing to talk to you about. In regards to this, there will be a post on Google Classroom for you that will take you to a Google form. Uh, it'll be included in the one that this video is linked in. And um, in that Google form, if you can put some information about the experiment that you've done, uh, and a way to contact you. Other students can look in a table, which will also be posted with this video, and they can see uh, exactly what experiment you've done. And uh, if they would like to request to pretty please uh, use your processed results in their final report, uh, they can contact you in the way that you specify in that. That might also be a useful thing for you when you're writing your discussion, to go on to that and say, hey, are there any students in here who are doing the same experiment as me? And if there are, you could send some of them an email if that's the way that they've asked to be contacted. All right, that brings us to the end of this presentation. Let me know if this format is a little bit better. It's a little bit more awkward for me because I'm not getting any immediate feedback, but if it works better for you, 
let me know. Um, if you've got any biology questions uh, or any questions related to the internal, you can ask them in the comments or you can send either Miss McNair or I an email. Have a lovely holiday. Um, enjoy the next two weeks. Make sure you do take a little bit of time off. Uh, hopefully we will have all of our systems uh, in a row organized for you when you uh, come back to online learning after Easter. All right, have a lovely holiday. Lovely talking with you.